A top 10 showdown gets national notice, but in Big Ten volleyball, it's somewhat routine. It's already happened a flurry of times so far this season with five teams currently ranked in the top 10. In fact, it's happening twice tonight here at Rec Hall. Also, we'll see Illinois and Wisconsin battle a little bit later on. Yeah, the Big Ten conference is so powerful. We are ready to go as you look at the starting lineups brought to you by American Ethanol. Again, Michaela Fecky, returning most outstanding player of the NCAA tournament, but working with a young, talented freshman setter. Yeah, I like Nicklin Haynes. She does a great job of distributing the ball and running a really crisp offense. You mentioned the other great hitters, Jazz Sweet, Lexi Sun, Stivrin, Schwarzenbach, both getting it done in the block game. And for Penn State, flip side a little bit, it's a veteran setter in Weiskircher and some other youth and hitters like Parker and Gray. Right, so Weiskircher is going to have to be a leader out there and really calm her hitters down and make sure that she's giving them the perfect set, keeping them into the game for the entire time. Again, in the Big Ten standings, Minnesota is the only remaining unbeaten at this juncture of the season. Nebraska, it's lone loss coming at the hands of the Gophers last weekend. Penn State started out with back-to-back -back losses in conference, but since then, Russ Rose's team has reeled off five straight wins. So here at Rec Hall, Penn State and their fans looking for a little payback. The only losses for the Nittany Lions a season ago, both of them came at the hands of Nebraska. Here in the Big Ten opener of conference play and again in the national semifinals, as John Cook's team ran all the way to its second national title in the past three years. Looking for another good one here tonight. The emotions, some of these players with a bunch of newcomers on both sides getting to taste the experience here for Nebraska, a road game at Rec Hall for the first time. And for some of those Nittany Lion newcomers, the biggest home game. They get Nebraska for the first time in front of these fans at home. Yeah, it will be an intense matchup. And like we said, it brings out the best in these elite athletes. They love moments like this when they play tough opponents in a great environment like we see in Rec Hall tonight. And it's just the fourth true road game for Nebraska this year. Remember, they're non-conference. Everything really at home, including that one trip to Omaha against a talented Creighton squad. Underway, Penn State at the net. And Nia Reed, you see what she means to this team. Missed four games with a foot injury, but back and in fine form to lead the way. The redshirt senior from Fort Lee, New Jersey. Leith serving. First contact, Fecky. Big swing from Sun, the transfer from Texas. At the net. Wise Kircher will back set Parker cross court. Bumped up from Maloney. Wise Kircher. Reed terminating. That's a good sign to get her jump started at the outset. That's right. And Reed has that thumb down shot, sharp cross court. 40th season charge for Russ Rose at Penn State. Over 1,200 wins, the seven national titles, and again, 17th Big Ten title, sharing it last year with the Husker. Wise Kircher again, looking Reed's way, and that one just a little too strong. And Penn State coaching staff again, after that slow start in conference, believing that things were starting to speed up each and every week and get into good rhythm. They're feeling more confident, but everything has to be rolling against the team of Nebraska's caliber. Well, absolutely, and you know, good teams will expose the things that you don't do so well. So it's a great challenge, and right now, evenly matched here at the net as uh, Schwarzenbach does a nice block there, closing to the pin, reaching right over. She is long, leading the Big Ten in blocks per set. Top five in the nation has come in, made an impact immediately defensively continuing to get her offensive game flowing even more. 2-2 Two -two here at the outset. Tori Garrell, a veteran who's into the starting lineup is Caitlin Horde, who's been a frontline first team player here for Penn State, missing her second consecutive game with an injury is John Cook. His resume speaks for itself. Again, two of those NCAA titles coming in the past three seasons here for Nebraska. 
Crowd quiet as White puts one in play. Sweet with a big left hand, pops it long. A week ago, you mentioned kind of being exposed with things you need to work on. That's what John Cook thought about his team. Minnesota really kind of dominating his squad. And Foe's coming in only hitting 123 on the season. Number one defensive hitting percentage for Nebraska, but Minnesota popped at a 280 clip and won easily. Yeah, and you know, Jazz Sweet right there on that play does a good job of cleaning it up. One of the issues that Cook talked about was, you know, passing issues were a problem of, against Minnesota and ball control, and we're seeing that a little bit here on the serve receive game for Nebraska. Maloney serving. Reed to the outside. Again, trying to go over top of that block, and it's long. Nebraska pulls even at four. Again, for the Huskers, Lexi Sun, high-profile transfer coming in for John Cook after being an all Big 12 selection at Texas last year. Trying to really get into the flow. Missed the first eight games of the season. And missed really all spring and summer with an injury. And trying to throw her into the mix, too, as a player helping in that pass game. Ames to the middle, Stiffrens. Weiskircher goes herself and goes wide. You know, you talk about Lexi's son, you know, going to all these Big Ten venues, it's all new to her. So essentially, she's like a freshman here in the league, you know, trying to figure things out, getting used to these intense arenas. And yeah, big outing, a dig away from a double-double against Indiana in the midweek showcase for the Huskers. Weiskirch looking Reed's way. Sun will bump it up for Fecky. And point Penn State. And Nebraska looking quite out of rhythm here. Ball control is an issue as John Cook was concerned about after that Minnesota match. Um, right now, you know, if they can just clean things up, get the ball to Nicklin Hayes, I think she can do a, a good job of running an offense, but passes like that are gonna make it very difficult. Fecky goes line. Weiskircher for Parker, and the freshman from Penn State can't steer it in. And the crowd here at Rec Hall a little bit muted at yeah. the outset, maybe reaction from what was witnessed on B10 a little bit early with Penn State at the tail end of that football game at home against Michigan State, watching the wind slip away in the waiting moments, trying to get things energized here. Normally, this place would be raucous and Penn State now starting to fall behind down two. You know how you react to these ugly plays is really important. That ball was just kind of hanging at the net and you want to try to do something positive. You know just pushing that ball away from the net high so that there can be a second contact on the play. Haley Densberger will come in to serve. Sophomore from Malcolm, Nebraska for the Huskers. Tough serving team, Nebraska. Penn State able, not able to keep that in. Gray pushes it wide. Yeah, Nebraska leading Big Ten and Aces per set. And now they've pushed ahead here at 8-5. So many hitting errors from Penn State, long, out of bounds. So, you know, you have to be playing at close to 100% in order to beat this Nebraska team. So hitting errors cannot happen. Parker trying to right the ship. Seven errors in the first 16 swings for Penn State. Certainly that not, will not please Russ Rose and his staff. But look at Parker here going high over the top, hitting that perimeter shot. We've seen her hit right side on this rotation, swinging left, and she's just a very capable, reliable player for Penn State. Yeah, the offensive numbers kind of gruesome so far. Both teams hitting in the negative here. Nebraska, though, up by three. Stiverens with a rocket. Well, Stiverin's movement is so smooth. She's so quick, you're going to see a little shuffle step and then her approach and that sharp cross-court shot, really hard to defend. She had one blocker in front of her and Stiverin's is super athletic. She's going to take advantage of that matchup. Just the second kill for the Huskers. Again, they've been gifted seven points on hitting errors by Penn State. And Leaf able to work it off the block of Haynes. Again, local product at a state college high school. Used to come to the Penn State games as a young player. Ended up at North Carolina with all the turnover last year. Nittany Lions losing those five All-Americas. Spot open, 
called to see if she could come back. Russ Rose happily obliged to have that experience on this team. Surging back, Jenna Hampton, freshman out of Berkeley Prep in Florida. Sun on the outside. Wise Kircher will look to leap. Sun getting the feet set. Strong dig, Wise Kircher. But the block, Sun knocked it out of bounds. She was ready to celebrate, and instead it's Point Penn State. Well, what a great rally. Probably the best rally of the set so far. You're going to see a huge block, and that did look in. No one is going to be challenging that call, though, so point goes to Penn State. Serena Gray, freshman from California with a serve. And there's an offensive output from Sun that's expected again has come through over three kills per set for the Huskers. And you can see when the pass is good, Nebraska has a lot of weapons. You have to stay with the middle because they will definitely terminate and if they pass well enough, then Haynes will dish it to the pins. Lots of angles for a great hitter like Sun. Big cut from Leaf. Free ball here, Penn State. Off speed, Tori Gorell. Redshirt junior from Oakville, Ontario. Again, some freshmen playing ahead of her, but with Ward's injury getting the opportunity in the starting unit tonight. Yeah, and sometimes that little tip over the block will score. It's in that area where both the right back and left back player are both unsure if the other person is going to get the ball. So nicely placed by Gorel. Certainly she has the ability to showcase that in spots for Penn State in years past. White, Weiskircher playing it over on two. Parker diving to the ground. Tip from Leaf. Weiskircher dumping again. Sun up. White the save. Leaf into the block. Hames. Sun off speed. Penn State can't save it, point Nebraska. You know, we talked in the open about having to take multiple swings before getting a kill. We saw Leaf having to take a bunch, but then it's a nice little tip shot by Sun. The set was brought in a little bit, opens up a lot of angle in that right front area of the court, and scores nicely. Good change up by Sun. Both teams certainly so skilled defensively. Mentioned that opposing hitting percentage. Nebraska tops in the nation. Penn State top block team. Huskers there in the top 10 as well. Service error from Nebraska. And Penn State gets the side out. They'll sub in Reed back in the front row as Hampton exits. And the Nittany Lions lost their Big Ten opener for the first time since 2013. 0-2 start for the first time since losing their first three league games in 2000. But they put it together, five straight wins coming in. But we're talking to members of the coaching staff today. If you don't play at your best against Nebraska, you'll get exposed. And the other thing, when you have opportunities to score, you've got to score. You need the offense and to make those points count. Yeah, and so they talked a little bit about even the possibility of bringing in a setter when Wise Kircher's front row to add another attacker. We'll see if that strategy plays out here in this match. Of course, they used the 6-2 last year with Abby Dietering to some great success in stretches as Penn State made it all the way to the national semifinals before being ousted by this Nebraska program. One point game here against these two top rivals, opening set of the best of five. Becky is long, of course. She was so gifted in that championship weekend. 19 kills, 19 digs against the Nittany Lions in the national semifinal, and 20 kills, 14 digs against Florida to put away another national crown for Nebraska. But as John Cook talks about, this white misfire is for a little bit different role this year, mm -hmm. playing all the way around and doing some more things. But maybe the biggest thing, leadership as a senior and guiding the way. Yeah, and I would think there's a lot of pressure on her. It's her senior year uh, to live up to and uh, to try to be the leader on the floor that's going to take this team to another national championship. Well, maybe that power play from the freshman Serena Gray will energize this crowd here. 
Big swig. Well, a nice pass, and look at Weiskircher just distributing the ball to that right pin, cross-court shot, nicely done. Penn State is out of the negative hitting-wise, still under 100. Nine kills, seven errors. White laying out for a super get, already her seventh dig of the opening set. Nebraska will take the point. Yeah, we saw Sweet rolling quite a bit in practice, working on roll shots to the middle of the court. We see that one score for her tonight. Jazz Sweet, 11 kills, over 400 in the hitting percentage game. And the midweek win for Nebraska at Indiana. Service error here for the Huskers. That's their second. Penn State also has two as well. Back and forth we go. What you would expect here? Well, these two Titans in college volleyball. Number five and number nine. Hampton. Sun with first contact. Aims to the outside and Becky in rhythm crushes it. And that'll send us to the mid-set break. Nebraska by one against Penn State. Michaela Fecky, the senior unloading for the Huskers. And things always intriguing as we get to the midway point of the Big Ten Conference schedule. There's an app Andre Flaw underway here. So Lauren Stiverin's trying to kick that alive. Was she watching tape of Brianna <laughs> Weiskircher from last week? And the Penn State setter had a beautiful kick assist in an outing a couple of games ago. As you look at the scoring for Nebraska, they have gotten assists from Penn State in a big way. Attack and serving errors in double figures already for the line. Sun rising. Hampton keeping it up. Sun into the block. Gorell read it right. Well, Sun had a thunderous cross-court shot, and Hampton for Penn State denied her that kill. Kept the rally going, and here you see her second attempt, Sun's second attempt at the ball, and Gorell shutting it down. Penn State by one here, 16-15. Serve coming from Gray, and another service error, third here for the Lions. Freshman from California, block leader per set for Penn State. Again, she and Caitlin Horde been a wonderful first year tandem up front. Again, Horde missing her second consecutive game. No official timetable when she'll be back in action for Penn State, but certainly moving around, not able to go full throttle yet for the Nittany Lions. Stiverins can't save it on the deck, and Penn State Continuing to get things done with Gorell front and center. Yeah, it's these off-speed shots that are catching defenses on their heels, and Nebraska not able to convert. The first contact came up. They tried the pancake. Ref said that was down, so point goes to the Nittany Alliance. Johnny Parker, big swing for the freshman from Ohio on the serve. Schwarzenbach, cross court. Leaf mistimed it and low. Richard Schwarzenbach's defensive prowess for Nebraska in top of the Big Ten in kills per set, but trying to get that offense going and give Nebraska yet another weapon up front. Yeah, I think with every passing match, her confidence just keeps increasing, and she's becoming more vocal, which is exactly what the setter needs, especially when the setter comes off the net. You need your middles to talk. Tough first contact for Leaf. And Nebraska will take the point and surge back in front. Well, that was the first ace of the game. You can see that serve going right down the line, right on the perimeter. We watched pass and serve today. Hames, the freshman, has a cracking serve. That one catching the tape. Gorell was able to keep it alive, but Nebraska will take the point. Well, let's take a look at how patient the block is. They're lined up hip to hip, so they know what the offensive play is going to be in each rotation. They read that one perfectly. And Schwarzenbach is able to pick up the block, her second. Nebraska by two in set number one. Lions and Huskers rolling in Happy Valley. National championship power. Uh, it's found at both of these fine institutions in the sport of women's volleyball. 
Yet they've won four of the last five national titles, combined nine of the last 12. Nebraska, the reigning national champs with a win last year, ousting Penn State's hopes along the way in the national semifinals. And they meet for the first time this year here in conference play. Nebraska leading set one by two. Joust to the net. Weiskircher reigns supreme. Weiskircher with one hand dominates that. Take a look at the strength in that right hand and pushing once and then pushing again. She schooled her on that play. <laughs> Heather Richards, senior from Rockford, Illinois. Again, another player in her final year being asked to do so much more, especially with a lot of newcomers around her, including eight freshmen, seven of who for Penn State have seen significant time and stretches. Off the block and out of bounds, Penn State pulling even. We mentioned Big Ten dominance. Look at the success, especially for these two in the national tournament with that stretch of titles in the last dozen years. Yeah, both of these programs just rich in pride and tradition. Two of the best coaches in the nation. John Cook, Russ Rose, it doesn't get any better than those two. Lexi Sun able to find the angle. Again, heralded top recruit coming out of high school from Encinitas, California, freshman year at Texas, decided she wanted to change, ended up at Nebraska. Again, missing a lot of time in the offseason, still getting acclimated to kind of the Husker way to do things in game play, again, after missing the first eight of this season. Right, and what stands out when I watch her play, she's very composed, she's so physical. When she jumps, her shoulders are above the net, and in the backcourt, she's long, she takes up a lot of space, so really reliable in every aspect of the game. John Cook talking about just continuing to do the little things, refine yourself to become even a more complete player like Huster Greats, like Jordan Larson, Sarah Pavin did, doing all the little things to rise your game even more. Certainly, Michaela Fecky rising to the occasion, seemingly when Nebraska needs her the most. Yeah, two cross-court shots. The first one denied. The second one just rips it again cross-court for the point. Fecky checking in. Her second kill. Also two errors. That one will work off of hands. Boy, Reed has been effective along with Gorel, each with four kills for Penn State. We're tied at 21. Yeah, Penn State is going to need Nia Reed to get going. She has to really deliver some kills because right now the hitting percentage, actually on both sides of the net, is pretty low. So somebody has got to get this going offensively. They're both just about 100 here at this point. In a Serious battle. We can straighten things out, put together a string here at the end of this set. Maybe it's Nebraska. Well, so far, Fecky is taking control. We saw sharp cross court last time. This time, high off the blocker's hands. Look at that elevation. She's going for the hands, turning her body down that line. Again, Nebraska taking advantage of a lot of Penn State miscues, but offensively going to that trio of hitters. Becky Sun and Sweet doing most of the damage on the inside. Penn State getting the middle involved with Gray. And you see a lot of the tips going back to right backs. So let's take a look at this. A nice jump set there by Weiskircher. Gray is up and ready, sees one blocker in front of her, and basically throws that ball down. 22 apiece. Key serve here to Jenna Hampton, freshman out of the state of Florida. Tight at the net. Gray up to battle Haynes. Overpass. And State whiffed on the put away. Nebraska dodged it there. Hampton way down. Leith rolling it over. Haynes for Fecky. Hampton sliding in to save it. Fecky jumped in front to take it herself. Down the line. Parker looking for a touch. Well, there was an opportunity right there for Penn State to end the rally. But then here is the finish. Parker right down the line. That ball was clearly in. Poor call by the lines person there. The up official saw it, called it in. That's the right call by Parker.
Well, John Cook is going to take a challenge. We looked at the replay, and clearly that ball looked in. Yeah, the only thing that might be questionable is whether it perhaps hit the antenna. I don't really think it did. Nope, she was clearly inside the antenna, and that ball was in. So John Cook will go through this challenge here, and Penn State's going to retain it, at least in our opinion. Our officials tonight checking this out. Paul Albright, the lead official. Kurt Fulmer will have the replay duties as the down official. So the first of three challenges here just going to be passed through by Nebraska if Kurt Fulmer sees it like we do uh -huh. here at this critical point. Penn State two points away from an opening set win. Well, and I'm sure John Cook wants to talk to his team right now um, because they're just not crisp. We're seeing a lot of hesitation. There's moments where they look fantastic, and then it kind of dips down the level of play does. So, you know, not bad to call for, you know, a challenge and uh, gather up the troops and see what's going on. Yeah, essentially using the challenge as a de facto timeout, if you will, as well. Get the official call, and from our vantage point in the replay, it's Point Penn State. Remains 23-22. Wednesday night, these Nittany Lions back in action against Rutgers. Big Ten Volleyball powered by American Ethanol. More of it Wednesday at 7 Eastern on BTN. Now timeout taken here by Nebraska. John Cook will get to strategize a little more with his team at this vital portion of the opening set on the road here against Penn State. Well, the Big Ten, Pac-12, top two volleyball conferences go back and forth here. Again, posing win percentage, road winning percentage, and look at the adjusted RPI. Yeah. <laughs> Not a lot separating when you get that far out of the decimal point. Right, you talk to West Coast people and they think their conference is the best. You talk to Big Ten people and uh, we certainly think our conference is the best. Is Stanford number two right now with Kevin Hambly, a former Illinois coach. And uh, Stanford is the only Pac-12 team in the top 10. You got Oregon at 14, USC at 15, Washington at 18. So a total of eight teams in the top 25. Um, but, you know, I'm still going with the Big Ten being the better conference. <laughs> Five in the top 10 for the Big Ten, seven of the top 17. Just three in the top 15 as far as the ABCA coaches poll go for the Pac-12. And that conference does have eight in the top 25. Right now concerned with number five and number nine. And again, both of these teams, you know, when you see them play different people, they operate so often at such high efficiency. It's a little bit jarring to see them kind of chugging along in the mud here a little bit. That's right. Well, uh, the passing game, I think both coaches will say it can get better. But when you talk about um, the physicality on both sides of the net, it almost washes each other out. So you've got somebody who can swing eight or 10 inches above the net, but then you have somebody across the net that's challenging them in the blocking category. So it really does even out and it forces them to create shots um, and try to get points different ways. Out of the timeout, tip from Leith. Good recognition from Densberger to lay out for the save, but Leith with power and the put away. Well, that's what you need from your outside hitter. Leith changing it up. Roll shotting, putting a tip over top of the block. A great defensive play by Nebraska. Second attempt at the ball. All power going for it. Taylor Leaf, what a stud on the left side. Timeout Huskers for Leaf. Just her third kill on 14 swings in the opening set. Again, Penn State struggled to find consistency in the offensive game. Soft stuff didn't work first, but then the power did. Yeah, you know, and as an outside hitter, you don't always want to avoid the block. If there's a seam in the block right there and you see the middle blocker reaching out, that's a great time to snap fast and try to get a deflection. Perfectly done there by Taylor Leaf. Boy, what's it got to be like for Taylor Leaf to come home? First grad transfer ever for Russ Rose at Penn State. So many of those career kills for North Carolina and almost as many as the rest of the roster again. Coming in, Penn State losing the five All-Americas from last year's team. And 
for a player that used to grow up liking the likes of Megan Hodge, Deja McClendon to come in here and wreck call and have a little homecoming in your final year of college. Cool story. Yeah, I love that story. I think it's just great that she gets to finish her career here at Penn State, a remarkable young lady uh, with a ton of talent. So it is a fantastic story. And again, being able to use her all the way around to do a lot of things for this Penn State team. Again, eight true freshmen on the roster for the Nittany Lions, 10 newcomers in all, and getting them together. And for Penn State at times throughout this year, talking to assistant coach Dennis Hohenschel, kind of figuring out what this group is good at and then putting them in a position to succeed. Well, right now they're good at getting to set point before Nebraska, and they're just doing it by playing a little bit cleaner than Nebraska right now. But it'll be interesting to see how Nebraska responds. Critical side out play for them. Can they put it away here, the Nittany Lions? And get a leg up here in the best of five. Hamptons had the hot hand serving for Penn State. Hames back set, Stiverns cross court. That is wide, and Penn State will take it. The opening was there, but the net helped steer it wide, and Penn State will take the opening set by three. So the Nittany Lions at home against the Huskers. Sloppy play at times offensively early, but Penn State doing enough to get the opening set win at home. Penn State 25-22 in set number one against Nebraska. Jason App, Andre Flaw, Nia Reed helping lead the way in the opening set as Penn State prevails. Yeah, her hand is hot right now. She's the hot player leading in kills for Penn State, but she is really going to need to continue to elevate her level of play. Nice cross-court shot there and then a wipe off the block. But uh, this Penn State team needs her to keep producing kills on that left pin. Not too many teams commit 10 attack errors in a set against right. Nebraska and live to tell about it, but <laughs> Penn State just did in part because the defense was there. That's right. We look at the digging numbers uh, for Nebraska at 17. For Penn State, it's 23. So we're seeing just how important those players are that come in in the backcourt. They're doing a good job of keeping the ball alive and really frustrating the hitters, forcing them to take multiple swings at the ball before getting a kill. And for Nebraska, kind of what John Cook told us this morning in a little bit of a dismayed tone, too much up and down with this team, and it kind of varies for different things at different times. That's frustrating for a coach. And that played out a little bit for Nebraska in stretches in the opening set. Set two, Haynes. Sweet, Parker keeping it alive. Weiskircher pushing it back court. Sun with a tip. And Penn State not able to save. Yeah, you know, great defensive plays on both sides of the net, but Leith with a great dig here, just showing how important it is to be long on defense and then great defensive effort on that tip ball, but they weren't able to convert. Penn State was not able to convert and get a point. Reed off hands down the line. Kendall White, we touched on her in the open. Already 13 digs here. That opening set, the first two points here, the second set. Yeah, I think what's really important for a, a, a bro is to just be able to read the situation, move feet quickly to put yourself in the best position to dig the ball, and I think she does a remarkable job at that. Second team All-America last season, All-Big Ten performer as well. And she is again on the floor. Ames back set, Son looking to cut the corner. You know, you're seeing a lot of first attempts, tips, trying to get the defense, up, you know, out of sorts a little bit, and then a free ball going over the net, and then taking advantage of a great pass where you have, again, all three hitters able to swing. And there you see Sun on the right pin hitting it hard cross court right on the line. Perfect positioning. Sun, though, gives it back with a service error. Fourth for the Huskers against one ace. And State has chipped in three serve errors. And Nebraska keys John Cook talked about. Don't let Penn State really get the middle going. You try to take some stress off your freshman setter in this normally crazy environment here at Penn State on the road. 
games. Sweet. Wise Kircher. First contact. And State Setter going outside for Reed into the double block. Johnny Parker off speed. Becky using hands effectively. You know, nice long rallies. And in the midst of the rally, you see a lot of one-on-one -on -one hitter against blocker. And what I'm impressed with is how the defense is playing around a one-block situation, keeping the ball alive. But it's all Fecky there wiping off the blocker's hands for a point. So that graphic under the picture of John Cook, it is amazing. Nebraska looking for an eighth consecutive win against Penn State. Muskers have had the upper hand big time recently, including three in a row in this building. And as we touched on, these teams seem to bring the best out in one another. Three straight wins the last three years here in this building for Nebraska. It's no surprise the Huskers have ended up with a pair of national titles because we're talking about today, you don't win here by accident. Right, and you know, the Big Ten, and when you play Penn State, it prepares you for the toughest competition in the tournament. So Nebraska just doing a, a really good job of prepping themselves every year, having great recruits, and coming out with strong players and strong teams every single year. And a little cleaner work offensively for the Huskers to begin. Three kills on 10 swings, no errors to jump up here. Stiverins adding to those totals. So when a middle is coming at you and you're in a one-on-one -on -one situation, you have to take one shot or the other away. Going straight up is not really going to help. So here you see how the middle is an option because it's such a great pass to Haynes. Weiskircher working the outside with Lee. Net violation here, Nebraska. Sub again. Gorell will return here for Penn State. Up uh, front with Parker and Lee. Serving is Gray. And that's wide. And we mentioned Gray and Horde, part of a middle blocking freshman duo that's been so effective for Russ Rose. But Caitlin Horde again, freshman from Lexington, Kentucky. Second game in a row, she's out. See her in the background there, hoping to return ASAP. Gorell chipping in with four kills in the opening set. But again, Russ Rose sticking this youth right into the fire early. And for the most part, this group is growing together. They are. Right now, this group needs to figure out how to pass the serve that's coming right down the line. We saw Nebraska working on that serve today in practice. They're going hard, deep, and right down the line trying to pick on Leaf. And Leaf has taken the bulk of the pass receptions for Penn State this year, coming at 429 for Penn State. The next closest player, Kendall White, at 199. People are really going after a graduate student, trying to put even more on her plate. Eight four Huskers here as they've stretched things out. In this second set, Becky will give one back for the service issue. Last win for the Nittany Lions. Coming back November of 2014 against the Huskers. Three set sweep at Rec Hall. Try to find the magic again. They had it in the opening set. Weiskirchen. Leaf shot handled, but a free ball to Penn State. Gorell trying to twist it in cross court and wide. Yeah, Gorell's really trying to go cross court with that attack, and it would be good if it if it landed in, but it's going so far wide, she's almost slapping at the side of the ball instead of getting the middle of the ball. So hand to ball contact on that swing, not very good there for Gorell. And first hitting error of the Second set for Penn State. Leaf off the block and down. You know, Weiskircher setting-wise for Penn State, we mentioned last year with Dietering in the 6-2, but for her, the adjustment, not only new personnel like Leaf, but think about, for the Penn State setter, the security blanket she's had going back to her club days. And 
Simone Lee, Ali yeah. Frandi, you're used to setting players you played with for maybe a decade or so. They're gone. You've got to find a totally new person. In. Yeah, and it's the rhythm and, you know, just getting comfortable communicating and what each player needs, not only from a setting perspective, but even psychologically. How are you going to deal with a hitter that maybe has some ups and downs? And that's Weisskircher's responsibility. Certainly, she has gotten it done. Kind of the mom of this group at times. Season high, 50 assists, 10 digs against Purdue on Wednesday in that four-set win for Penn State against the 17th-ranked Boilermakers. Now the offense may be picking up a little bit. Yeah, and you get the sense that Nebraska's game plan is to serve a lot of balls to Leith. She's getting a lot of attempts in serve-receive, and there you see a nice dump there by Weiskircher to score. She also had five kills, career high for her. Matching it with that work against Purdue. Side out, Nebraska. Get up front, looming large, Schwarzenbach. Here you see just the classic A ball, a quick there, and I like the way she hits angles, getting her thumb up on the ball, going to the right back area of the court. Reed will go line. Hames able to keep it up. White will put it over. Opportunity, Nebraska. Leaf can't save it. Jazz sweep, electric as a freshman, continuing as a sophomore. Yeah, and I had a great angle of Jazz Sweet's face as she went up to swing, and she had the look of intensity in her eyes. She wanted that kill. She delivered for her team. She delivered against the Nittany Lions in the national semifinals last year with 12 kills. Big one here as Nebraska's up 12-7 of the second. More BTN Women's Volleyball powered by American Ethanol Friday. Maryland at number 17, Purdue. And these Huskers will be on the road in Madison against the Badgers. Catch it all here on BTN. Saw Adam Hughes, disciple of Russ Rose. Last night he and the Terps gave Michigan State all the Spartans could handle at home in College Park before bowing in five. And Nebraska with an aggressive serve there right in the middle of the court. We'll see if the pattern gets adjusted at all for Penn State. Now Taylor Leith getting a lot of balls coming her way. We'll see how she responds. Third ace of the match here for the Huskers against the five serve errors. The lead lengthened to six. Sun with another crack. Better first contact from Leith. And the dig back over the net. Reed will get another chance at the put away. Another save. Fecky able to deflect it over. Two excuse me shots, if you will, for Nebraska, and it pays off into the point. Yeah, and Sweet just cleaning it up. Again, she just goes high and hard and takes advantage of a block that isn't perfectly formed. A nice little heads-up play there by Fecky. But that's the thing. You just have to keep the ball alive and then swing big on that third contact. And things rolling Nebraska's way here. Set two. Weisskirch trying to get... Gray going, and that's shut down by the Husker block. Well, the block for Nebraska is so smooth right now, and it's really what John Cook takes pride in with his teams. Serve tough, and then read on the block. And Fecky is so strong. She's just so experienced as a left side attacker. She's experienced as a blocker, and she can go one on one against a slide attacker. But that time, Schwarzenbach was there to cover that cross court shot. Five straight points for John Cook's team. So Russ Rose goes to the bench. Amanda Fegley, freshman from Tampa, Florida, who came off the bench and gave them a bit of a lift against Purdue with a career high six kills, does the same here right away for the Nittany line. Well, that's exactly what you want. You Give somebody the nod, hey, get in the game and do something positive for our team. She comes in, swings big. Nice job by Fegley. It's 667 in that win in four sets on Wednesday. Delivers immediately as Schwarzenbach pegs Weiskircher. Well, Schwarzenbach is such an unassuming kind of young lady. She's kind of quiet out there. And then she unleashes on something like that. Take a look at this swing. Almost rips Weiskircher's head off. An aggressive swing by Schwarzenbach. Now the Husker teammates have seen that in practice and trying to kind of 
encourage her to do more of that. They've seen her awesome skills in the block game, but there's a lot of untapped potential offensively for the big freshman. Yeah, they're trying to get her rolling. I think they're just kind of shucking and jiving with her, trying to get her to loosen up a little bit. Um, I think she's going to be a fantastic player for Nebraska down the road, but really doing a really good job of doing her job in the middle. And this Nebraska team looks looser and lighter here in set two as they have hit the accelerator and now the lead is at the double digits here in the second. Well, an interesting swing here in the second set. Nebraska, everything going their way. Penn State just sloppy, unable to really control the first contact. And Russ Rose is going to call a timeout. Again, Nebraska hit under 100 in the opening set so far in the second, hitting at a 550 clip. John Cook's team cruising. Husker fans in the house enjoying the turn of events here in the second set. 18-8 lead for Nebraska here. Lexi Sun continuing to display her offensive gifts. Yeah, what a great job mixing it up, really challenging the defense, and then that power shot cross court. So Lexi Sun getting seven kills so far in the match, hitting 3-1-6 for the evening so far. And I'm telling you, this kid, you have to know where she is when she's front court. The ball is going to end up in her hand. So we'll see if Penn State's block focuses a little bit more on Lexi's son. The other notable thing, eight blocks for Nebraska, four for Penn State. And Nebraska in shutdown mode again up front. And the attack has been clean, too. You saw the stark dis difference in hitting percentage for Nebraska from set one to set two. 11 kills on 20 swings, no errors here in the second for the defending national champs. Russ Rose will go to the bench again. Johnny Parker coming out. Allison Cathy, another freshman from New Albany, Indiana, coming in. He was a starter for a stretch when Nia Reed was out for her four-game spell with an injury earlier. So 22 and white on the floor for Penn State. Ames. Fecky finds the hole. Well, everything is going Nebraska's way. The offense is being run so well by Nicklin Hames. Let's take a look at the nice tempo set there to Fecky and the block for Penn State just out of sorts. Big holes in the block. And Fecky will take advantage of those holes. Big shoes, too, for Hames to fill, trying to replace Kelly Hunter and what she achieved at Nebraska. Penn State will take the point. Coming in with her pedigree, regarded as the top high school setter last year, she's come in and jumped right in for John Cook and delivered some big moments. Penn State really trying to work back here, just trying to build some momentum potentially for set three in this 11-point hole. Aims for Fecky, and again, finding that cross-court alley. Well, Fecky playing with a ton of confidence right now, and she's got reason to feel good about what she's doing, hitting just that cross-court deep shot over top of the block, so super impressive. Six and six, kills and digs for the senior from West Point Island. Leap down the line and tags it. Now let's take a look again. A great line shot. Again, those perimeter deep shots, so hard to defend. You're guessing, is it in, out? Am I going to get an easy point here by the ball sailing out? So really effective when hitters can go up strong and go deep on the court. Past ACC Player of the Year during a time at North Carolina. She and Reed each with a half dozen kills to pace Penn State so far tonight. Leith again. Sun with first contact. Ames going herself twice. Kathy gets it over. Hampton laying out for one. Good dig, Maloney. Down the line, winner from Fecky. 
Uh, Maloney just doing a great job defensively for Nebraska, keeping that ball alive. Really hard shot here. She extends her platform to the ground. And then Fecky takes a set that is a little bit too low and is so effective at just swiping that ball in the right back corner of Penn State's court. Just a veteran shot there by Michaela Fecky. Calm put away from the leader. And now defensively, Penn State again issues with the Nebraska serve. And the Huskers two points away for the set to win. Classic Nebraska volleyball, just serving tough, but serving really effectively to their targets. Fecky doing a great job of hitting her target in the left back area of Penn State's court. Burrell in the middle, four kills in the opening set. Trying to build on something for the Lions to carry on past this set. And you gotta love Burrell's energy after that kill. It doesn't matter what the score is, you're absolutely right. The momentum has to change and she's gotta be part of that by really getting excited when things go well on her side of the net. Stiverin and the Nebraska block there again. And that's Hames on the block. A really a shorter setter there at 5'10", but what she does really well is just goes up strong. She jumps and lands in the same spot. Reads very well, very balanced. Low and over. I'd take a short black block rather than a tall, messy block anytime. So Hames doing a really good job of sealing the net. And give the setter credit. Stiverens was in the neighborhood, but wherever they've been, Nebraska's block has been dominant here in set number two. Eight of the match for the Huskers as they finish on a 15-4 flurry here to dominate Penn State in the second and even up this match at a set apiece. We're ready to go in set three. Jason Knapp, Audrey Flaw. Our Big Ten Network crew, glad to have you along for another top 10 showdown between these longtime powers together of the Big Ten. Sun, first swing into the Penn State double block. Reed, Maloney can't handle it. And this crowd, again, maybe a bit muted from a lot of them maybe being at the football game where the Nittany Lions lost in the last 30 seconds, trying to get themselves going in this one. State will take the first. Hames, the joust one. You talked about her, the big block for Nebraska at the end. A freshman, sometimes they come in, they're quiet. Yeah, she not does this not kid. seem she's got the quiet mentality. There's yeah. some feistiness there. Uh, she's a fighter, and I love that about her personality. You know, she's very vocal, she's confident, she has taken complete ownership of this team. When we look at Nebraska, we think, whose team is it? And for a freshman to say, hey, it's my team. She loves this Nebraska program. She wants to do well as a freshman. And she is doing a great job of distributing the ball. But more importantly, that emotional fighting spirit she brings to the court is incredible. Boy, look at the sweet setup here for Sun. Full extension for her and the put away. And you look at Haynes, you wonder pressure coming in, playing for a coach. John Cook's tight pedigree. Can't be more pressure than playing for mom in right. high school, right? Winning a bunch of state titles there. And the Webb School in Knoxville, Tennessee. So certainly she can take it, and she's, again, found her rhythm in some key spots at times this year for Nebraska. Yeah, she is a good one, and her future is so bright. Um, it's been so fun to watch her do her thing out there tonight. 2-2 Two -two here, white serving. Ames will look for Sun, uh, trying to go off speed and change it up, and just a flat misfire. Yeah, and she's laughing it off, which is a good sign. Lexi Sun is just kind of going, wow, what did I just do? <laughs> she kind of took the ball and tipped it into the bottom of the net. So very strange um, error by Lexi Sun. Maloney. Jazz sweet. Leith again seeing a lot of attacks, able to handle the latest. Back row look for Fecky, and that works. Well, Penn State's block was there. All three blockers were there, and yet Fecky finds a way to score. Just a great aggressive swing here. We're going to see Fecky in the back row attack. All three blockers there takes advantage of Weisbricher's hands. 
Ames to the outside. Becky again, and boy, and Russ Rose even talked about it. Their outside's kind of quiet opening set. She's not quiet now. She's going off, give her nine kills here. Yeah, and Russ is saying over the net. Get your hands over the net early on, Becky. Not high and off the net, because then she will wipe the ball right off of your hands. Reed going line. Sweet cross court. Smelled out by Serena Gray. Well, Gray does a good job of denying the cross-court shot. She reaches hard back to the middle of the court. You're going to see what four hands together looks like here. Really well done to reach back to the middle of the court. Look at that celebration after the point. Sweet again. Saw the block coming this time. Steered it wide. Another look for Sweet and a flat bomb. Yeah, Sweet takes advantage of Gray going to the outside, committing to the outside. Take a look at the one-on-one -on -one situation that Sweet is in. And boy, you find yourself one-on-one. -on -one. A nice tight set. Boy, you rip it. Gifted player out of Shawnee Heights High School in Kansas. Flying your trade here for Nebraska. Gray looking to get things rolling in the middle for Penn State. And you gotta love the energy that Kendall White brings. She is embracing her middle attacker, hugging her, saying, yeah, let's go. So she's trying to get that energy out on the floor that's so important right now. Kendall White, what a great spark plug she is for the Nittany Lions. The Penn State folks were saying as soon as they got on the plane to come back from the win against Purdue on Wednesday night, Nebraska, 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 it's all Kendall White's yeah. talked about the last <laughs> few days. And again, for her, trying to break through with her first win against the Huskers. Again, Nebraska's won seven straight against Penn State. A couple of unsuccessful offensive tries, and there's Johnny Parker, the freshman from Ohio, who's been a little quiet so far, but maybe that'll get her going. Well, let's take a look at how Penn State does a good job of extending the rallies by covering their hitters. There's nothing better as a hitter when you go up and you've got confidence. Hey, I can take a rip at the ball, and I've got the defense around me that's going to help me should I hit the block. So extending the rally, Penn State does a good job, but Parker on the right pin with a score. Third on Penn State and kills per set as the Nittany Lions use the middle again to great success with Gray. But Parker coming in, moves so well, can do so many different things and trying to find spots for number nine there to really show her stuff against Nebraska. 7-5 Penn State. Close win for the Nittany Lions in the opening set and a resounding not-so-close win for Nebraska in the second. Serve error for Penn State. Fifth for the Nittany Lions in the game against no aces. And again, Nebraska, four aces, five errors to this point. Bryce Kircher to the middle to Gray. Well, Gray is doing an exceptional job of going on the edges of the middle blocker, so turning her body to hit back to right back. Take a look at how she almost gets blocked, but she manages to swing so that it's not hitting the middle of the blocker's hands, but off the edge. Nebraska trying to limit Penn State in the middle. Gorell did damage in the first. Now Gray doing damage from the center. Here in the third, Stiffrens looking to go cross court. That's wide and Penn State's lead out to three. I think Stiffrens needs a ball that's a little bit higher and maybe not even pushed all the way to the pin. I think something that allows her to swing into the court cross court as opposed to slicing it sharp. Nebraska with a timeout. It's been a while for Penn State's last taste of success against Nebraska in volleyball. We're going to go back November 29, 2014, almost four years ago. Nittany Lions got it done. Allie Franny, Haley Washington had big games when they were freshmen. Mm -hmm. They're now graduated. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a rivalry, but uh, Nebraska definitely um, has the advantage in the last few years uh, doing a good job of uh, just kind of having Penn State's number. That includes three in a row in this building where the Indian Lions are good for 
More than 90% of the time winning matches here at home. Nebraska out of the timeout, trying to pick up some momentum. Stiverin's getting going. Yeah, that's a better set to Stiverin's. She needs it a little bit higher. She elevates so well. Anything low is really hard for her to manage. Uh, so that's a great line shot on the slide. Becky serve. Hampton and Leaf almost collided. And stay able to play it. Sun off, hands and down. You know, you take a look at Fecky and what she does in the backcourt, just making a great defensive get, which translates over into a nice set to Lexi Sun. Lexi Sun taking a little bit of heat off the ball and really trying to tool the block. So a great defensive play by Fecky and a great kill by Sun. Weiskircher back for Leaf. Not in a prime spot. Roll shot, pancake up by Maloney. Sun with a big swing. Parker power. Yeah, that freshman may not be the biggest at 6'1", but boy, she can generate some juice. Yeah, she's got great feet, so she moves so quickly. But take a look at just how relentless this Penn State defense is, keeping the ball alive, and then Maloney doing the same thing on her side of the net. And then Johnny Parker, line shot, bomb, scores for her team. Led Penn State in kills Wednesday with 18 as she hit 271. Here with five kills in Reed is eight, leap six to guide the way. Penn State as a team, hitting percentage looking better. Remember, 10 errors in the opening set somehow survived it in one. Nebraska dominated with serve and block strength in set two. Densberger diving, but can't get there. And Penn State now by two. Well, a nice swing by Gorell. And again, she gets up so quick. And I like how Weisskircher is making her middles, giving her middles an opportunity to swing. But that's because serve receive is looking a bit crisper for Penn State right now. Gorell, six kills on the night, doing a good job of keeping the blockers for Nebraska home in the middle. And getting her number called with poured out again and delivering. Some key stretches for Penn State. Nebraska with the side out. Sweet will run back in now for the Huskers. You're going to see a great pass here. And then just see how high Lexi Sun gets over the net. And I like the way she just looks cross court, hammers it cross court. Good torque elevation with her shoulders. She's upright when she swings. Just perfect, picture perfect type of swing from her. Do you talk about that swing. At times, it's one of those players. And Reed's got it too. It looks elegant when yes. she goes up for the ball. Yeah. Well, I think what makes it look elegant, as you say, is you know the, the relationship to where the ball is in front of their shoulder. So they jump, they leap, and they're kind of floating in the air, and they hit the ball at the highest point possible. So yes, it is a beautiful thing to see. You are seeing some of the best in the nation in this top 10 showdown again, even at a set apiece. Gray flying in. Ames with a tough set, but Sun ready for it. Boy, the freshman with a lot of moxie. And again, connecting with a transfer from Texas. Well, and I like Lexi Sun here on the right pin. You can see how she gathers herself a two-step approach and just hits high, deep down that line. 11 and five so far for Lexi Sun. Nine kills on 19 swings for Penn State. No errors, yet they only lead by one. Fecky. Overpass put away by Schwarzenbach. Well, I think what's really great about Nebraska, their ability to read the situation. The ball was set tight on Penn State side of the net, and Haynes knows that it's going to be a tip and makes an easy play. And as a result, there you have Schwarzenbach with a great overpass kill to end the rally. Sun serving. Weiskircher had it red, but a net violation. Point Penn State. Weiskircher will drift back to serve. 
leads the team 17 aces. Penn State does not have an ace tonight. Leaf again can't handle the heavy hitting from Nebraska and sweet with a swat. Well, Leith is in great position and she's making some amazing defensive efforts, but you can see that the game is won and lost in inches here. The ball is just slightly over the net. Had that ball been on her side of the net, maybe a different result on that play. So great defensive effort, just things aren't quite going her way tonight. Reed, first Nittany Lion into double figures and kills with her 10th. Just when she's on the floor, there seems to be a kind of a calming influence for the Nittany Lions. Well, she's consistent, and she's able to hit a variety of shots. So, you know, that cross-court shot there is big time from her. Just the first two games of Big Ten play, four overall. Last two in non-conference with a foot issue. Gray had it red, but couldn't get the body right in the right spot to make the play. 14 all. Densberger back to serve. And similar situation to set number one, which was tight all the way. Nebraska won the second and a runaway. Weiskircher going back for Parker. This time setting Leaf who smacks it down in Penn State. 15-14 edge. Yeah, give some credit there to Weiskircher. A great tempo set. Look at how low that ball is, and it just, it's hittable right there at the pin. So really nicely placed set by Weiskircher. Penn State will go to the bench. Bailey Hoffman will come in to serve. Senior from York, Pennsylvania. And lays out for the dig, but it went over and Stiverens crushed it. Haynes, a great heads up play. Not much she could do with that ball. So what do you do? You put it in a difficult spot for the defense to get. Haynes tipping the ball deep corner and no ball control by Penn State results in an overpass kill again for Stiverens. 15-15, Becky. Burrell trying to go, and into the net is Nebraska. Well, Stiverns was there. She felt it. She was loaded, ready to go. Just a little bit too much press on the block. Let's take a look at it again. Yeah, her forearms. And she knew it. She admitted, yep, I'm in the net. Fourth block error on the Huskers. Uh, Penn State with another service giveaway. In the hitting in this set, Nebraska at 370, Penn State at 520, and they're dead even at 16 all. Another serve giveaway. The rhythm and flow of the game gets a little discombobulated when you, you just get the side out and then you don't put the serve in. They're just exchanging points back and forth, so really difficult to kind of feel that rhythm. Um, and it's just been an interesting third set on both sides of the net. It's been an interesting kind of just weird night. Again, yeah. this was the tenor of the first set back and forth with nobody really able to have any kind of breakout long stretch. And then Nebraska's was just fueled here, the quiet of the crowd in the second. And then we've gone kind of toe to toe back and forth here in the third. We'll see if you can ride a wave here on the stretch in the tail end of this third set. Vice Kircher looking for Reed. The block is out of bounds. Well, I think what it's going to take is somebody to just step up and say, OK, look at I'm fed up right now. Let's do this and really take control on their side of the net. And what an offensive turnaround for Nebraska. But as Russ Rose pointed out, fueled by strong serving, that got the block going and opened things up everywhere for Nebraska to really ratchet up the offensive proficiency. Leaf will bump it up for Reed. Back row attack, Fecky. 
And boy, Schwarzenbach has been able to put away some freebies. That's right. You know, the other thing that the blocking team for Nebraska is doing really well, when they're not stuffing the ball, they're getting great touches, positive touches on the ball, slowing it down, and able to get a nice, easy dig to the setter. Reed ripping one. Yeah, that's a great play by Reed. Nebraska trying to serve her deep, trying to get her out of the offense. She delivers a good pass, then gets her feet to the outside. An explosive approach, a big point here in the third for Nia Reed. She had a career high 15 kills, hit 500 in a three set sweep of Ohio State here last weekend. She's got a dozen so far on this night. And they'll go to her again. Why? Well, that's where Penn State needs to get that point. It was a down ball that they had, and you don't want it to result in a point for the other team. So a hitting error, really not a great time for a hitting error um, by Nia Reed on that long cross-court shot. And it's the first hitting error of the set for Penn State. And she'll make amends with that put away off hands. You've got to have a short memory as an outside hitter. You have to be relentless and confident in yourself, Nia Reed, after that hitting error, coming back with a big point. Weiskircher and company going right back to her to keep her rolling. Third of the swings have gone to the redshirt senior. Stiverance, boy, smelled an opening in the back. It's a great change-up shot. You know, you know that Penn State's defense, their middle back, is playing right smack dab in the middle. So on a quick attack, those corners are open. And, you know, it's a great move there by Stiverens to change it up a little bit, keep the defense on Penn State unsure of where the ball is going. Sophomore from Scottsdale, all big 10 freshman pick a year ago. Invested in that block on the last swing for Penn State. Collision there, Densberger and Maloney both back up and at it as the Huskers take the point. You know, that's exactly what you want. You want two players going hard for the ball. And yes, uh, Densberger got the bad end of that one. She almost got her head taken off. But that's okay. You know, that's what playing defense is all about. She'll take that. They got the point. That's what it's all about when you're a DS. Yeah, that's the big thing. They looked up, and Fecky had finished the point, and Nebraska takes the lead in a critical set three. Nebraska 21-20 lead here, third set even at a piece. Don't forget, coming up later on BTN, Mike Hall, Stanley Jackson, Chuck Long, recap the entire day in college football. The final drop presented by Auto Owners Insurance tonight, 11 Eastern on BTN. Now the Huskers won here in a sweep to start off Big Ten Conference play a season ago that ousted the Nittany Lions in the national semifinals as well. This one has the makings of going at least to four, but who's going to get there with the advantage? Densberger off her shoulder, Sun able to get there. Becky puts it over. State able to capitalize. Weisskurser setting Gray. Again, Gray doing a good job. She tends to hit the same shot to right back. We'll see if Stiverens adjusts her block when they're running that A. You can see it so well executed there, that cutback shot by Gray. And the freshman performing strongly again. Starter from the get-go here for Penn State, first season in State College. Stiverns cross court, over past Nittany Lions. Aims to the outside, Fecky finds the open space. You know what I'm impressed with, you know, uh, uh, yes, of course, Fecky got the big kill there, but the pass by Sun is so good. She is doing a great job on serve receive. Look at the power behind that swing. That's an all-American arm right there. And in the big moments, the big points, number two seems to be there invested and converted. She's serving now, Nebraska up one. Leaf spanks it. 
Well, Lee found herself one-on-one. -on -one. It was a great jump set by Weiskircher, holding both blockers, the left front and the middle blocker there. They're jumping in sync with the middle and leaving the big swing on the left side for Penn State one-on-one. -on -one. Eighth kill for Lee. Three errors on 29 Sting. A swing, Stiverins able to get that cross-court shot down quickly. Yeah, that's the set that Stiverins needs. A little bit higher. Let's let her take a good whack at the ball. Look at that sharp cross-court shot. Nebraska two points away from a two sets to one lead. Off the bench, Capri Davis checking in the front row here for Nebraska, the freshman from Mansfield, Texas. A little different look of the front line here for the Huskers as Penn State watches the serve error equalize things at 23 all. Well, Capri Davis got, went in in order to be a bigger block, but as soon as the ball gets served in the net, the setter's coming right back in. So Hames is back in. Again, at 5'10", she can get exploited there as that right pin blocker. Didn't work out with the serve giveaway. Hames will dump. Leaf, great effort to keep it alive. Back row attack, Becky. Couldn't get there, and now Penn State is set point. Now that was a great effort by Fecky. Really explosive in the back court. Leaping, but just hitting it. Just a little long. Again, the game is won and lost in inches, not feet. And here you see a miss <laughs> defensive move by Kendall White. And it happens to go out of bounds just slightly. So Kendall White doing a good job of ducking and getting out of the way. And she just re just replayed it for her teammates in the huddle with that, <laughs> whoa, out yeah. of the way. Yeah. And it worked out for the energizer for Penn State's defense, 24-23. Boy, Penn State, the crowd here, Serena Gray, been doing some good things for Penn State throughout the season and throughout the evening. Well, big numbers for her, five kills on 10 attempts. So a really good job of just making herself active in the middle, getting up wherever the setter is. She's doing a really good job of hitting that ball and tipping it, so keeping the backcourt defense off balance. So now Penn State, opportunity to seal the deal. And Nebraska out of the timeout. Got to deal with this crowd, which is a little more uplifted here with play for the Nittany Lions in the latter stages of this third set. Gray's hitting numbers coming in, hitting 341 among the leaders for Penn State. That's down a little bit. Yeah, this is a critical side out offense for Nebraska. We'll see if they can get a good pass and who the go to player is in this situation. I would say Lexi Sun. Leaf will trigger the serve here for Penn State. Set point, Nittany Lions. Ames going to go for Sun. That's the call you made. That's the play the Huskers used, and it worked. Well, there really wasn't another option uh, because the setter, Hames, was taken off the net. So even though Penn State knows exactly where it's going, you have to deal with that talent that Lexi Sun has, taking a ball, having four hands in front of her, and getting a point for her team. Hames, big serve for her. Fifth ace of the game for Nebraska, and now suddenly set point Nebraska. Yeah, she is a gamer. Look at this aggressive serve going after Parker in the backcourt, and then the fist pump. She is celebrating big time with her team. And five serves in the match. They were so critical at generating that throttling win for the Huskers in set number two, and now it's another tough serve that could catapult Nebraska to victory here in this set three. Again, you look at the East story for the Huskers. Yeah, and you know, they're trying to go down the line. They were picking a number 43 Leaf for Penn State. You can see a couple aces there. Here's another one. It goes shanking off of Leaf's arms. And I think one of the things to being a good passer is just being calm and getting your platform out early and then 
holding it, holding that platform to target. I think on the counter side of that, what makes a good server, boy, you want to get that ball at the highest point possible. That's why we see so many people jump serving, and you want to get the trajectory of the ball going down um, as it crosses over the net. Making passers move side to side and deep is also very effective. And uh, Nebraska just putting on a clinic tonight with their serving. And again, in that loss last weekend against Minnesota, Nebraska maybe not able to serve as effective as normal. Just one ace in that match against the six surveyors as the Gophers got things done. Better strong serving tonight. And you look at Haynes, Schwarzenbach, Caitlin Horde with Penn State, but not playing tonight among your top freshmen in the league. Yeah, these are the best of the best, and these freshmen came into the league. We all knew that they were very physical, that they were talented, but they really have elevated their game here in the first part of the Big Ten Conference. Their numbers speak for themselves. So Nebraska back-to-back -back points. They have a chance to put this set away. Haynes trying to keep it going on her serve. Burrell, son with first contact. Sweet. Weiskircher. Fareed. Sweet, off hands. Reed pops it over. Haynes looking to close it out with Sun, and the off-speed play will do it. Well, this Nebraska team came here to compete tonight. What a great job they are doing, mixing up their shots. Lexi Sun, all power, 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 and then an effective roll shot, tip over the block, scores. So what a gamer she is. 14th kill of the night for the Nebraska sophomore, and the Huskers up two sets to one. Another engaging showdown between these longtime rivals, top 10 powers, number five, Nebraska, taking the third set, 26-24, to go up on ninth graded Penn State, two sets to one. Jason Epp, Audrey Flaw, glad to have you along here from Rec Hall. Lexi Sun doing her thing. Had seven kills in the first two sets combined, seven alone there in the third. Yeah, Lexi Sun is a star. 14 kills for the night, hitting 355. And she decides to roll in her first tip on set point. So Nebraska, or Penn State completely caught off guard. It was power, power, power from her all night long. Set point works in that tip. So what a smart kid on the left side for Nebraska. You look at Penn State, by far their best offensive numbers of the match in the third set. They hit 415 for the set and lost. Russ Rose trying to figure the way past Nebraska here with his team in the fourth. Well, this is why Nebraska is, you know, in the top in the nation. They do so many things well, and even when things aren't going perfectly, they just keep fighting and pushing, and they really believe in each other, and I think that's part of it, too. I think this Nebraska team is playing with a ton of confidence. Like, I feel like they think that they should win tonight, that, they are, uh, that they're the better team, and I think that goes a long way when you play with that sort of confidence and you have that sort of trust in your teammates. Jazz sweet. Able to pound it off the Penn State double block. And Nebraska strong here at the outset of set four. And Nia Reed just getting tooled here a couple times and frustration setting in. And what can you do better as a blocker? Well, you block actually with your feet. You've got to get your feet to the point of attack a little bit sooner. And you really want to press over with that outside hand. So you want to seal the net and make sure your hand isn't just up as a target, turning that pinky down so that the palm of your hand is facing the center of the court. That certainly does help. Here's Hames in the middle. Schwarzenbach. Reed will take another big cut. Free ball, Penn State. And Reed able to direct it down. Well, we mentioned this is not the only top 10 showdown going on in the Big Ten tonight. Don't forget, Illinois, Wisconsin underway in Madison there. 
How about that one in the third? 32-32 yeah. as they are extending one another. You can check that one out on BTN to go and BTN Plus. Well, there's Nia Reed with a great block, great form. And she celebrates with her teammates. Let's take a look again up and over. And there you see left shoulder kind of leading the way a little bit after she presses and holds with her hands over the net. It's the fourth block of the night for the Penn State defense. Nebraska has registered eight in the block category. And now Sweet finds the net. Russ Rose, say, excuse me, yep. just saying Russ Rose at times has talked about this season, we've been our own worst enemy mm -hmm. in a few matches. Can, can Penn State play a clean set and put together key points at the tail end of those sets? Well, serving aggressively certainly does help. They're picking on Fecky right now. Kendall White doing a good job of an aggressive serve, but a serve that is on target and on point. You can see that ball going right on that left sideline. Well executed by White. And the first ace of the match for the Nittany Lions gives them a three-point lead here early in the fourth. Kendall White trying to help Penn State pull back even. Two sets to one lead for Nebraska, but Penn State up 5 2 early stages of the fourth. We showed you before the break Illinois and Wisconsin dueling in the third. The Illini, Audrey, took that set in the third. 35 33 to go up 2 1. And Penn State here continuing to pile up points in the fourth. Well, Penn State's block coming through. Weiskircher sealing the net. You know, when a lefty is swinging on that left pin, they tend to go cross court across their body. Weiskircher knowing that, reading it perfectly, sealing the net. Four point lead, Penn State. And White, boy, look at the energy she has. Certainly, it's infectious for her team and carrying them on her serve right now. Oh, you got to love when you have a kid like that. It comes naturally to her. It is not an act. That's just the way she is on the court and off the court. Tons of energy. I remember when Penn State recruited her and coaching staff with Salim Rockwell at the time said, you know, she's a little crazy and we love it. We need <laughs> that personality injection with that crop of players and it's carried over for this group. Yeah, one of the best quotes I've heard about Russ Rose and his recruiting, he doesn't recruit people of character, he recruits characters. <laughs> yeah, that fits. Kendall White fills that bill. Junior from Zionsville, Indiana. 7-3, Nittany Lions. Back row for Parker. And then White is the first one up there to encourage the freshman. Yeah, and you know what? That's what Parker can do. She moves her feet so well and is explosive. Let's take a look at White and the energy she brings there. After that kill, look at She's the first one there in her face. She's leading this team emotionally. Exactly what you want from your bro. And she has helped out as well, delivering a plethora of digs for this Penn State team. Becky, just strong power to get that through. But it's a great second ball, too. And out of system, I believe it was a bump set high, and it goes to the perfect spot. So Fecky delays her approach, waits till the perfect time to just go in. As you said, explosive, gets up, goes hard after the ball. But great second contact by Nebraska. 12th kill of the match for Fecky again, averaging 3.7 kills per set. Ames going back to Sweet, who swings wide. A scramble play by Penn State results in a point for Penn State. So a hitting error. Let's take a look. A little chicken wing there. And then the hitting error. And that really, with a free ball coming over the net, usually free balls result in easy points. Nebraska with a miss hit. And State by five. Freshman setter to the senior star for the putaway. You know, we talk about serve and serve receive, and you know, you can see it displayed in this match. It will determine the outcome of this game. 
so evenly matched. We see one team having a good run with serves and as a result, tons of points and better blocking, better defense. So serve and pass, it's what it's all about. Coaches talk about it a lot. We're seeing it demonstrated here. The little things separate these two phenomenal forces. Becky continuing to put her fingerprints all over this game, along with the rest of the Cornhuskers here. Densberger back ready to serve. Weiskircher has to track back for it. That put Leaf in a difficult spot and can't get it done. As Stiverns is 6 4. If she knows that ball's going to the outside, she has time to get there, place herself in perfect position. And we see how she has just been dominating at the net. This Husker team cruising along. Fell in the season opener against Florida, that rematch of the national championship game, and then ripped off 14 wins in a row before being bumped off by Minnesota a week ago. Back to form early in the week and against IU. Trying to find it again here against Penn State. Stiverance and the Huskers complaining about the last call. Well, yeah, Stiverin said she wasn't in the net, but they're calling number one, the setter for Nebraska. Haynes in the net. Stiverin said she didn't do it. She's right. <laughs> it was the freshman who got called for it. Fecky, roll shot. Parker will bump it up. Trying to find Leaf on the outside. Parker can do that in a pinch. Player that set and played a bunch of different spots in the high school ranks. Yeah, I've seen her as a setter, and she is an incredible setter. So right now, this uh, Penn State team needs her to swing and be a steady force on that right pin. And Penn State, three kills, three errors on 13 swings so far in the set. Nebraska, five kills, four errors on 14 cuts. Weiskircher has to hustle back. Tip from Leap. Sun returns the favor. And Leap soaring in. Too strong into the net. Yeah, Kendall White just misplayed that ball. You want to keep that ball off the net on a second contact. Bump sets it high, but too tight to the net. Not much Leaf could do. She tried to save the ball, but uh, just kind of flew into the net. Lion lead at one. Weiskircher to the middle. Burrell off kilter did get it over. Penn State's block picking up its sixth of the match. Well, Johnny Parker, what a great job. Just reading this press and hold, and she finds the court with that block. 11-9, not a ton of separation here between these two, much like the first and third sets. Again, Husker is pretty much freight train Penn State in set number two. And again, it's a one-point game one more time. The Sun is doing a great job when the set is in rhythm and she gets up. She's got a bunch of shots that she likes that time hard cross court and you could see Penn State's defense was there but the ball is coming at them so quickly that they just can't control the dig. Has a match high 15 kills but that's her first here in this fourth set. Weiskircher trying to get Leaf going and does it with the off speed stuff. And in comes Nia Reed. So Nia Reed has got to, as a senior, take this team on her shoulders and get this set. They are in a must-win situation, and we'll see if Penn State can continue to lead and just play with confidence and play consistently. Gabby Blossom in off the bench, coming in to do some work here for Penn State. Can't get down to make that play. 
yeah, you want to really make sure that that ball stays on your side of the net. So it's one thing to pursue it aggressively, and then the most important thing, control what you do when you play that ball. Reed, off the net, cross court. Weiskircher will go to the redshirt senior. Burrell giving the free ball to Nebraska. Reed bails out Penn State with a huge block. Well, you would think that that point would have gone to Nebraska the way that they were playing in the rally, but then you need somebody like Nia Reed on your side of the net to say, hey, you know what? I'm reading this lefty. I'm going to seal that cross-court shot. I'm going to get a point for my team. Penn State's block becoming a bigger factor here in this fourth set. Penn State by two. Weiskircher will go back to Reed. Fecky with a dig. Diving in is Haynes to try to save it. And it works out here for Nebraska. You want to have composure in critical moments. That could have been a great play, a play that could have gotten Rec Hall on their feet and screaming an overpass kill, maybe taking someone's head off. But Gray swings hard out of bounds on that overpass. James continuing to build up her teammates, trying to get out of here in four. The block squares us at 13 all. 11th block of the game for the Huskers. So I think this is a very interesting point in the set. It is a must win, as we said, for Penn State. Will they feel pressure, and will they play tight, or will they relax, play composed, and trust in each other and compete? So this is one of those critical situations. Again, Penn State in a must win here in the fourth set. And this one feeling a lot like that first set where neither team really could get the offense on track, both hitting under 100 in the set. Joust to the net. And double contact here for Penn State. Point Nebraska. Russ well, Rose up to have Weiskircher talk about this. Yeah, I think they're saying Weiskircher played the ball twice. Let's take a look. There is the attack into the block so she can play that second ball. There's contact on the way down, it looks like, and then uh, again. Yes. Yeah, so it's hitting her forearm as she's coming down, and then she plays it again. So that's two contacts on Weiskircher. To Russ Rose having his discussion, making his point with Kurt Fulmer, our down official. Penn State pleading their case, and Russ Rose asking Kurt Fulmer if it's a reviewable infraction. And now he's going to have a discussion here with the up official, Paul Albright. Well, and what happens is when these officials are talking this out, it gives the coaches and the team an opportunity to chit-chat themselves. So a little momentum change is what Russ Rose is looking for. So you use it as a timeout. Give your players something to think about. We saw Nebraska on the sideline with John Cook giving some instruction as to what he would like to see in the next play. Clarification here about the call. Let's take another look. She goes up for the joust, is playing it with her forearm, and then plays it again. That's a double contact on Weisskircher. And again, when you're looking on some of the things the officials can look at, look at net faults, foot faults on serves, 
touches, four hits. Walker defensive player, but not in that sequence. And we play on Penn State trying to get going. And again, the serve turnaround allows the side out here for the Nittany Lions. Ames going back for Sweet, the sophomore, with a big swing. Kenzie Maloney with a great pass, calling that ball super calm on serve receive, a clutch person on serve receive. And look at this set. I love the way Ames gets up, and as she's setting that back set, she rotates her body toward the net. It's perfectly delivered to her right side attacker. Ninth kill for Jazz Sweet. Penn State pulls back even. And Nebraska does have five aces, but double that in the serve error category now with 10. Hampton serving now for the Nittany Lions. Leith with a solo block chance, had to save it herself. Ham setting Fecky, who again is able to find the floor. Well, Kendall White was reading Fecky line, and that's what Fecky does so well. She, her, her body, it'll look like she's hitting one shot, and then she wrists away and puts the ball where the defense is not. Take a look at Kendall White going the opposite way and not able to be stopped at the point of contact and read where Fecky actually hits the ball. Kill 14 for Fecky, a dig away from a double-double on the night. Nebraska, more importantly, has the upper hand trying to close the deal and surge to victory here in the fourth set and leave with an eighth consecutive victory against Penn State. Gray. That cutback shot to position one has been so effective for Gray. It's really surprising me that Nebraska's block isn't just committing and taking a step toward that attack. Kill eight for Gray. And the serve long for the freshman. Big moments here for both of these teams. Third of the fourth set to really be close to the critical point. Becky. Leith's shot handled by Nebraska. Sun with a tip. Weiskircher down for the get. Densberger, nice dig. White first contact, Penn State. Leith can't finish it off. Sun trying to do so, and does. Hey, when you got Fecky playing the kind of defense that she's playing in middle back, it's going to be hard to get a point. She lays out beautifully to save this point. Take a look at her range. She extends, plays the ball, and then it's Lexi Sun. Big time cross court shot. Take a look again at Fecky's remarkable play there in middle back. Fecky again, we mentioned different role for player that's been most outstanding player of the NCAA tournament. Those two title runs for Nebraska in the last three years. John Cook emphasizing different role for her again playing all the way around plus this thing of leadership that she and Kenzie Maloney as seniors. It's one thing to do it but until you actually go through it and understand what it's like to be a senior guiding a team you can't experience it until you actually do. Right, and I really appreciate their leadership style. They're not going to yell and scream. They're very calm. They're very composed. Um, their, her teammates really have the utmost respect for her. So, um, you know, Fecky just having a lot of qualities that really help this Nebraska team elevate to the next level. And again, you've got experienced crop of hitters for the most part for Nebraska with a young setter, Penn State a veteran setter, but with a whole host of newcomers. Again, 10 of them, including eight freshmen, seven seeing fairly considerable playing time. He's here, Penn State took set number one against Nebraska. The Huskers trying to slip out with a third consecutive set victory. 
to take the W against Penn State. Sun in a big spot, just like at the end of set three, she is coming through with clutch time. Yeah, 17 kills on the night. Great set and just seeing the block going high but not over, exploiting it. Lexi Sun, boy, she is just the real deal. All-American, wonderful player. And first year here for Nebraska. Parker denied. She'll get another crack. Went with the tip. Fecky back to play it. Joust, Parker, and Garrell team up for the win. Well, a ball that's bump set too tight to the net becomes an advantage for Penn State. Garrell's there to clean it up. Important side out for the Nittany Lions. Down two. Blossom, the freshman from St. Louis, in serving. Densberger has it. Stiverens with a rocket and Hampton can control. You know, I can hear Russ Rose and he's saying to Hampton in the left back area of the court, you've got to make a play. And a play she made, she got the dig up, but again, not in control. She shanks that pass, second contact, not gettable by anybody else on that Penn State team. Nebraska five points away. Serve, tick the net. Ames coming over for Sun. White lays out. Leith from a tough angle. Back row attack, Becky, and that's long. Well, I like the tempo that Nebraska is trying to set that. That back row attack, it's very low, it's very fast, but Becky not able to get over top of the ball and put enough topspin on the ball for it to land in court. Russ Rose will go to the bench again and give another Different service look. Junior Emily Shora, Chantilly, Virginia, entering for the first time. Fecky with a good pass. Good get from Blossom. Reed, certainly the primary hitter out there with a lot of defensive specialists in, and she comes through. Well, you got to keep the ball off the or Penn State does a great job of playing scrappy defense. And then Reed finds herself up against one block here. You can see that Haynes did not come inside with the inside set. So essentially, Haynes just stood flat-footed. Reed one-on-one -on -one delivers for her team. 14th kill, near Reed. Penn State down one, must win. Set four for the Nittany Lions in Penn State does not want to fall to five and three in Big Ten play. And trail the front runner, Minnesota, and even the Huskers in second position even further in the overall standings. You look at the kill leaders, and Lexi Sun has more than anybody else on the night. And the sophomore from California, her first year on the floor for Nebraska. You know, she plays with just so much confidence She's composed in tough situations. We've seen her mix in some shots here. Nice little tip over the block to score. So Lexi Sun, what a great addition she has been to this Nebraska team. And Lexi Sun and her play, the State Farm State of Success. And Nebraska looking to try to get out of here in four. Penn State hopes to extend it to five. Season high and a Nebraska career high for her with 17 kills. And again, each match, maybe you can see it a little more and more of that game kind of getting unfurled after spending so much time off with injury in the off season and the early season here for the Huskers. Yeah, she's definitely finding a rhythm tonight and, you know, just able to call what she wants. The communication out there is exceptional. So just a, just a remarkable player. So fun to watch her play. And sure, came in. And delivering on her serve. Another chance here, trying to get Penn State to tie it up. Weiskurtzer shuts things down up front. We're even at 20. Well, the ball was set a little high for Lexi Sun. She was up there in the air, kind of hanging. Really didn't have much else that she could do except tip the ball. It was kind of going over her left shoulder. But give credit to Weiskurtzer to just hang up in the air and 
swap that ball back down. Sun cross court and finding that open lane for a big Nebraska point. Let's take another look at it. Hey, when the game is on the line, who do you go to? You go to your big swing. Lexi Sun is the answer for Nebraska. See the hitting percentage. 257 for the match for the Huskers, 161 for Penn State. Reed on the outside. Maloney will bump it up. Sun again and hooked it wide. Well, Penn State has a chance to work their way into winning this fourth one, but at this juncture of the four set. It is a race to four points. We'll see what they can do on this serve. White has the serve on it. And the net is friendly. And the celebration is awesome. <laughs> she tiptoes into the court. Take a look at Kendall White. Yeah, I'm having fun. That's what you want at this point. You want confidence. You want to have some fun out there. Enjoy the competition. Enjoy the moment. Third ace for the Nittany Lions in the match. And the error given right back. That's the ninth in that category. 22 all. So it's important. Will Kendall White be able to just forget about the miss serve, come back, take up a lot of court on serve receive? give her team a great pass, something that they can work with offensively. A little ball go to Leaf in left back. Johnny Parker back in, subbing and returning for Blossom. White to the outside. Double block there, Nebraska. Reed again. What a get from Haynes. The setter saving the day. Free ball, Nebraska. Becky stretched out to handle a difficult set and made it work. Well, Becky using changeup, really having a, a heyday with the Penn State defense. But what a great get there by Haynes in the rally. One-handed stab at the ball. You see free balls being sent over on Nebraska's side. Becky again with a roll shot. Johnny Parker making a great attempt on the ball, getting her hand under the ball, but not being able to control it. It's about not only going for it, defensive pursuit is certainly important, but that control, where does the ball go after you touch it? It's got to be playable by the second attacker, so you want to dig high yeah. middle of the court. That was a BTN standout presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Timeout Penn State as Nebraska is two points away from an eighth consecutive win against the Nittany Lions in the series. So if you're Russ Rose right now in that huddle, what's the theme here at this point? Well, I think he's probably talking about percentages. Who's going to get the ball when it goes to their, to Nebraska's side of the net? But right now, he really wants his team to do a better job of playing defense getting that ball up so they can get a transition swing. But the very first thing they have to deal with is that tough serve by Nebraska. So a lot of things that have to go right right now for Penn State. First ball contact, critical. He talked about that was a key to success in a scrambling first set for his squad when neither team lit it up. You look at the offensive numbers both subpar by their standards. First set, and then Nebraska really strong and stout in the second and third. The fourth, very similar with issues offensively. Who can just pick up some points here at the end of the fourth? Sun with serve duty. Wise Kircher will go to Reed. He will find a way to push it through the block. Well, credit to Leaf to be composed and calm and delivering a perfect pass here. She moves her feet, bends her knees, and then Reed, big swing, keeps her team into this set. 
teams. Becky denied by Gray. That's a big time block. Gray goes up and over, and the ball literally hits the floor before her feet even have time to land. So very aggressive swing by Fecky. Sometimes the harder you hit, the harder you get blocked. Uh, Fecky, though, has a, a moment here to kind of regroup after that stuff block by Gray. That got the fans here at Rec Hall rocketing out of their seats. Timeout Nebraska as Russ Rose's team as a set point to try to send this to a fifth set. And Nebraska, let's correct that, taking a challenge there. Yeah. So John Cook not able to take the timeout, but authoring a challenge here, which will serve as a de facto chat for his team as well. See, they're looking for contact into the net, perhaps. I think they're looking at trying to stop momentum. <laughs> yeah. You heard if you could read the lips of Kurt Fulmer. No net. Call stands. And the challenge is remaining. Nebraska down to one. Penn State is all three. They'll each get another one if we do go to a fifth set to add to the pile. And Penn State can do it with one more point right now. Sweet cross court, missed it, and Penn State sends it to a fifth set. A Penn State showing the kind of fight that champions are made of. Not playing great, but you still compete hard, trust in each other. Reed and Gray coming through big time in the end of that fourth set. Penn State, Nebraska, two teams in the top 10, two national powers. Go into a fifth and decisive set at a record. Here we go. Nebraska trying for an eighth straight win against Penn State. And the Nittany Lions looking to snap that slide against the Huskers. First contact, Blossom. Reed adjusting at the net. Maloney will bump it up for Fecky. Weiskircher going outside again and Reed in rhythm. Great get by Kendall White, controlling the dig, putting the ball right to Weiskircher, and then Nia Reed, wow, quick snap on the ball, somehow finds a way to score there. Nebraska's block didn't look too bad there, his forehands going up and over, but the snap from Reed so quick. 43rd assist of the match for Weiskircher, along with 15 digs. And Reed now is 16 kills. Sweet. Good save from Shore, who stayed in to play defense. And she can't get to that one. You know, it's really important as a defender to watch the hand of the hitter. As soon as the elbow drops and the hand opens up, you want to release from your base position. You're, if you're playing a deep defensive position, release from that defensive position and track the ball down. But it all comes from reading the hitter's hand. So Russ Rose has decided to use his first challenge. He's going after a possible net violation on Nebraska on that last point. So it's back to the monitor here for Kurt Fulmer. Again, the race to 15 is on here in the fifth. Still needing to get there by two. This decisive final set. Well, I think what they're thinking is possibly that that ball hit the antenna. There's no net touch there. We'll see if there's... I feel like every player for Nebraska was clear of the net. So Kurt Fulmer we're going to do his due diligence here and just make sure before we resume. And John Cook... Looking on his group, and again, pushing through after watching that first set slip away. Powerhouse performance in the second set, 25-11, and then pulling out the final couple of points in the third to go ahead. Watch Penn State return the favor with critical points one 
to take the fourth. Here's another look at the entire point, see what they're searching for. Well, they're looking for a net violation here. Let's see. So far, right there on the right side attacker for Nebraska. Looking Jazz at it. Sweet. Yeah, mm -hmm. looking for it for Sweet in that in first the thrust yeah. in the yeah, middle of the in the, the midst of the rally. Uh huh. And tough to tell from that angle, at least at where she landed, did it jostle anything there? So Kurt Fulmer going to continue to survey that. But you can see the intensity, how much these coaches value every single point. It's important to fight for every single point. Russ Rose thinking he might be able to get an easy one here if Jazz Sweet was indeed in the net. Well, you know what? It is ruled a net. Big swing there. Penn State with a 2-0 lead here in this short run in the fifth. All right, we're going to take a look at it again. At that point right there, you can see that her stomach was into the net as she landed on the block. So see the challenges remaining for these two teams. And State off kilter, Point Nebraska. You know, and that should be an easy play for Penn State to read. The ball was set tight. There's only one thing that the hitter can do, and that is tip the ball. So your right back player and your left front player need to release and play that ball, but it all happens as you read the set out of the setter's hand. 20 digs for Kenzie Maloney. And a tough serve right there, off the tape, played by Leaf. And another net violation here against Nebraska. Nia Reed swung and hit that ball long, so Jazz Sweet into the net again gives another easy point for Penn State. So two here in the first four points of the fifth set. There have been a handful of nets tonight against the Husker. Stiverance, no net, just a clean kill. Lexi's son delivering a great pass. She takes up a ton of space in that left back area, middle back area, and you see Stiverance changing up her shot, going right after the bro, Kendall White, in left back. She and Sweet with nine kills for Nebraska. Fecky, 16, Sun, game high, 18. Reed, 17 for Penn State. Leith also in double figures with 10. Give one more to Nia Reed as she checks in with another key point for Penn State. Nia Reed is doing exactly what Russ Rose wants her to do. Take aggressive swings, play with confidence, carry this team to victory. Put this team on your shoulders and let's go ahead and swing to win. Continues to pile up the kills and extend her career high. Give her 18 now on the night. And at 15 in a previous career high last weekend here against Ohio State. 4-2 Penn State. Parker pumps one down the line. You know, when we talk to these coaches, they mentioned that you have to take advantage and be the first to score. Fecky roll shotting, it turns into an easy dig. Parker with a more aggressive swing than Fecky, and it scores. So Johnny Parker going up big on that right pin. Big work from the freshman. Fecky with more power that time, and it hits the deck. Nebraska gets the side out. Fecky retreats to serve. Double-double for the senior. Gets the call from the bench. And where to go with the serve? They'll go to Leaf. Good contact for her. Fecky the dig. Parker, cross court with a tip. A couple of good first contacts for Leaf in this point. 
Hames for Sun down the line. And she smoked it and got the touch. Now I like how smart Sun is. She takes Nia Reed out in the first swing by tipping to her, which limits what Penn State can do offensively. She gets another attempt at the ball and then goes hard, gets a touch on the block. Reed. White, beautiful dig. Weiskircher went for the dump. Nebraska read it. Boy, Reed continuing to get her number called. Swing number 66 of the night. And I believe that's a career high in kills for Nia Reed. Take a look at that shot. And then there's Kendall White. Lots of celebration. 19 kills now for Reed. And the bench taking care <laughs> of their star on the night, making sure she's ready to return. And now Gray and Parker up front on the block. Parker is a gamer. I've seen her do some great things in her club career. This is a great block, sealing the net. You just want to get in front of the hitter's approach, go straight up and over. 16 for Penn State. Gray does a good job of sealing it, reaching right back to the middle of the court. That's what you want to do. You want to get in the face of the outside hitter. We'll see what Sun does in response to that. Penn State raising its block profile when it needed it the most. Yeah, we talk about you know, how these two teams bring out the best in each other. Penn State was forced to elevate their game, specifically their blocking game, and they have done just that. Number 16 for Penn State, Serena Gray, really doing a good job of moving from pin to pin, sealing the net, and getting some quick points for her team. 7-4 Penn State, serve off the net. Good hustle from the Huskers. Great get from Hampton. Reed and Leap. Weiskircher. Parker down the line is wide. When Leap thought she had terminated on that yeah. point, Nebraska saved it. Maloney with a great dig, and the entire place just kind of moaned on that one. It was so impressive. She was a little bit farther away from the ball and really pushed off her feet and got her platform under the ball. A great dig by Kenzie Maloney for Nebraska. 20 plus digs for both of those liberos. Serve long from Stiverance. They'll change ends here. Penn State 8-5 in the fifth. Ross Rose's team, boy, it didn't look promising at one stretch when they were down in the fourth, but they found a way. A chance to end this slide against the Huskers. Well, one thing you know about Russ Rose's teams is they will fight hard. And even though they didn't have, you know, one of their sets was just really bad on their part. You know, they came back, they regrouped, and it's because of Nia Reed and everything that she's been able to do. She's had 67 attempts offensively, 19 kills on the night. This Husker team. Trying to find some magic in the fifth against the Penn State squad, which has only hit above 152 once in the first four sets of this match. And yet they're right there with a chance to win it here in the fifth. Sun, again, continuing to perform at a high level. Yeah, you talk about bettering the ball. Not a great pass by Fecky, but look at that bump set by Maloney right on target, on point. Sun hitting high over top of the block. That's her 20th kill of the night. Even here, close to 11 o'clock local time, the sun is rising <laughs> in the east. In the dark of the night here in Penn State and trying to lift Nebraska. Hames down. Sun again. Parker. Leaf. Pancake Maloney. Leaf, another big save for the Huskers. Finally, Garrell finishes. A great rally. Listen to 
of the crowd. They are so appreciative of the great volleyball that they're seeing tonight. Burrell taking a dig that goes over the net. Take a look at the pancake, though. Great effort by Maloney to keep the ball alive. Fecky aggressively going after the ball in the backcourt, but not able to handle it. We talked so much about how it points are won and lost inches, and now that ball just trickles over the net. Advantage goes to Burrell. Superior effort from both here in the fifth. Sun hunting the line and missed. Penn State five points away. Timeout Nebraska. And no surprise, Haynes going to the top kill player on the night, and Sun just couldn't dial it in. Yeah, they're in an interesting serve receive pattern with Sun on the right side. We'll see if they stack left and push Sun to serve receive on the left side, which is um, just as effective, you know, as she is on the right. So we'll just uh, have to see what kind of serve Penn State's able to deliver, whether Nebraska will be in system. And the thing that I'm interested in seeing is Nebraska's serve receive pattern out of the timeout. And this rec hall crowd muted a little bit early, especially with that play of Nebraska in the second set. And their team falling behind two sets to one, but the Nittany Lions stabilizing, evening things, and now elevating their game, and it hence the crowd here in the fifth near Reed going a long way to helping get everybody back energized in this building. Yeah, she, you know, approaches so well and has been calling for the sets, but you see her position blocking-wise has been perfect, and then taking advantage of hands goes after the block. She's not avoiding the block in celebration all round for Nia Reed. Again, Reed, last year, and you've got hitting stars like Simone Lee, Mally Franti, Haley Washington, and others. Kind of was able to pick and choose her spots, but now one of the front line heel players for Penn State and coming through tonight. Tough first contact for Fecky. But Sweet makes something happen. How about the bump set from Sun? Yeah, that was great. Again, bettering the ball, taking a bad pass, putting it up nice and hittable, and just going after it. Jazz Sweet, aggressive. Big point for Nebraska. Sweet now with 10 kills in the night. Third Husker in double figures. Leith, second effort. Sweet called on again and too strong. You know, there's not much that Haynes could do on that ball because the left side attacker played the roll shot, so she was left with setting middle or right side. Schwarzenbach is the middle right now, so Haynes went to the high back set and a bad error by Sweet. Four errors attack-wise for Nebraska in this set, just one for Penn State. May turn out to be the difference as Sweet is strong again. Back-to-back -back errors for the sophomore. And John Cook has the green card out, wants a challenge, looking for the touch on well, that swing from Sweet. Taking a look here to see if Nia Reed touched it. Would be a big point for Nebraska should they get this call. On the one angle, it looks like the ball might change direction here, which would make us think that Nia Reed's right hand. Yeah, to me it yeah, to me it looked like um, she touched it with her finger. The slightest touch, <laughs> but a touch nonetheless. We'll see um, if the down official sees it the way I saw it. And is there enough to over overturn the call? Again, which went in Penn State's favor to begin. 
and what a turnaround again for the Nittany Lions. Again, it hasn't been pretty, but they are finding ways to get things done, be it improved block there at the tail end of the fourth set into the fifth, some key offensive plays, straighten out ball handling errors at times. Russ Rose, just for this young team, what could this do for the psyche of Penn State? Challenge not there, call upheld. Penn State 12-7 here in the fifth. Hook is irate. Huge point for Nebraska right now. Can the control get a point? Trying to even this out. Sure, a serve. Ames on the run, setting for Fecky. Schwarzenbach with a block. And again, Nebraska started to celebrate. It'll end up being the Huskers' point as Reed is off the antenna. They're trying to get that boost from a big block, except Penn State kept it alive. And this is where you have to trust in your training. You have to be calm, but yet aggressive. So there's got to be a balance here. Nebraska has got to get a tough serve over the net. Weiskircher tight. Gorell will play it. And a handful of times tonight, the Nittany Lion middle has found a way to just do what she can to earn the point. Yeah, you got to learn how to play ugly. And playing ugly is sometimes hard to train. We train in system a lot. But playing those balls are really important. So a ball that is just trickling over the net, what are you going to do with it? Gorell takes control and just finds a way to get a point. Well, John Cook's got one challenge left. He's going to use it right now here to check out that last point. Well, at this point, Nebraska must play close to perfect in order to get this set. But I have seen stranger things happen and fifth sets going and extending well past 15 points. John Cook wanted them to look at a possible net from Penn State. Don't know if that was from the initial movement earlier from Weisker. I'm not seeing any net on Penn State's side of the net. So again, it's been a busy night. Challenges for Kurt Fulmer in going to video review. Will it matter here for John Cook's team against Russ Rose? Again, veteran leader of Penn State, so often having success, but not against his opposite number from Nebraska of late. Can Nebraska, another unsuccessful challenge out of them now, and maybe out of here with a loss. Penn State two points away from closing the deal. Fecky, the pass on the serve from White, and the put away from Stiverance. Nebraska needed the side out and yeah, got it. Absolutely. And this is very doable. Is it a challenge? Absolutely. But Nebraska has the horses. They've got physical kids in the front court. They can block, they can dig for a point and make this a very interesting fifth set. Densberger called on with the serve. Weiskircher soaring in for the set. And Reed hammers one down to take us to match point. Oh, what a champ she is. When her team needs her the most, everybody knew that ball was getting set to her. She just buries it down the line. Match point, Nittany Lions. 
that'll do it. An ace for Weiskircher seals the deal, and the streak is over. Seven straight defeats for Penn State at the hands of Nebraska. It comes to an end at home tonight as the Nittany Lions survive in five. Well, what a great turnaround after that second set. Penn State just grinding it out, playing good team volleyball. A great win for Russ Rose and his team.